All right, another little video to pique your interest in an aspect of your world that you may not have thought about or heard about, and that might, just might, get you out of your comfy home and into the big world outside. Have fun. Here we are again in beautiful downtown Milford, Connecticut. We start with a 360 degree panorama of the city. To the south, you can see Charles Island just off the coast. As we swing to the east, you can see the mountains in the distance. You can actually make out Sleeping Giant way in the distance there if you really look closely. And as we keep swinging around, we're looking to the east, and that's Gulf Pond over in the distance where I believe you could do a little bit of fishing. And here we go, a little bit further. We'll be getting to Charles Island in a moment. The legendary pirate, Captain Kidd, is said to have buried a treasure on that island shortly before he was caught and hanged around 1700. And then we see here uh, the Milford Harbor, the more southern part of it, and we come across uh, the different neighborhoods in Milford on the western side. And you see the boats down there are still covered uh, with shrink wrap, but in the next month or so, they'll be taking those off and putting back, putting all the boats back in the water. Today, we are going to the Milford Library, where I recently installed, with the help of friends, thanks Tony and Art, an art exhibit of paintings and photographs by local military veterans. The exhibit includes memorabilia from the Vietnam War. The library had asked me to set up the exhibit in conjunction with a talk on the Vietnam War that was being given at the library. The photos in the exhibit are by members of the photography club that I helped organize at the New Haven Veterans Center, which is located in Orange, Connecticut. Now, as we descend over the harbor toward the library, you can see the heart of downtown Milford on the left. Beyond, up along the mighty Wepawag River, you can make out the city hall with its low tower and, behind it, the white congregational church with its steeple. The church was built in about 1883, and with its noted Queen Anne Victoria structure, it is one of the most architecturally sophisticated buildings in Milford. I'm paraphrasing that from Wikipedia. But it is a very nice New England looking church, very typical. The library, by contrast, is very modern in construction, uh, having built, been built in 1886. Before that, the library had been located for 100 years in the Civil War Memorial Hall building, which is still standing. Uh, it's very distinctive and just up the street. When you visit the library, you can park in the large parking lot at Fowler Park, which is located down Shipyard Lane, down off of New Haven Avenue. It's the lower part of the library. Oh, whoops, I almost crashed into that birch tree. Whoops, uh, still getting the hang of flying these drones. The library is now open to the public, Monday through Saturday. Uh, please check the hours on their website. They open, I think, at 9.30, but their hours are a little strange. Uh, Areas as you get into the library now. The bottom floor here is a children's library. As we go in, the children's library will be on the left. And they also have a some books here that you could purchase for about a dollar each as you walk in the second door here. <clears throat> uh, there's a sort of mezzanine which we're going up now on the way up, which has a long, tall wall. Uh, which the library has dedicated to offering month-long art exhibits by various local artists. The way we set up the exhibit is to place the paintings high up on the wall and the photos lower down. The paintings are all Vietnam related, but the photos are mostly from our photography club at the Vet Center and were taken mostly along the Connecticut shoreline. There are a couple of photos of our friend Art who passed some time in Vietnam. And there is a photo of the statue that is located near the Vietnam Memorial. Um, we'll get a chance to talk about a few of these paintings as we look at the rest of this exhibit here. And here we see in the case, uh, we have a Claymore mine. And we have a, can't quite see here, the Claymore mine and a Purple Heart by one of our, that was given to one of our comrades here. This large painting, Chopper in Flight, is by Tony Arnold, a Marine veteran who served in Vietnam in 1968 as a combat engineer 
where he earned a Purple Heart for some terrible wounds that he suffered in the field in the line of duty. Tony expresses his feelings about the war with powerful, emotional splashes of color. He is a prolific artist with a wider range of subject matter. In this mixed media work, also by Tony Arnold, I think Tony suggests that the military industrial complex, warned of in the 1950s by President Eisenhower, had maybe a little too much influence on the way the Vietnam War was managed. But I don't want to get into politics here. This collage is also by Tony Arnold. Here, he seems to try to put the Vietnam War in its social context of the 1960s and early 70s. It's made sort of a Time magazine front cover. It was a time when social strife at home encountered the military culture of the war effort. By 1973, our military had won the war, but by then they had lost a lot of support of our civ civilian population, and many returning veterans felt lost, or at least unappreciated, regardless of the politics involved. My friend Art was a radio operator, or RTO, in an Army infantry company in the 4th Infantry Division in Vietnam. As such, he spent way too much time climbing around the hills and ravines of the central highlands of Vietnam, from Pleiku to Ban Mi Tuat and other distant wild parts of that country. In this mixed media work, Art seems to ponder his time in Vietnam when he never knew if he would be lucky enough to have a future back in the world, which is how we thought of the USA when we were over in Nam. So here we actually have a photo of our friend Art, a lifelong resident of Milford, as he was sloshing through a field of rice on his way to that tree line ahead, hoping Charlie, what we call the Viet Cong guerrillas, wouldn't take a pot shot at him from said tree line. Fortunately, Art made it home in one piece. Well, we have another photo of Art. A morbid sense of humor was a safety valve for our pent-up emotions around the battle zone. It can help offset the feeling of the daily lurking of the Grim Reaper, not knowing, knowing whom he might choose next for the dance macabre. Your future was just another crapshoot. This was a painting I did based on a photo I took in Vietnam. We had rounded up these peasants in Arizona territory, southwest of Da Nang, during an operation there in the fall of 1967. An NVA regiment, North Vietnamese, was in the area stealing the rice and food from the peasants. The idea was to carry the peasants to a resettlement camp where they would be safer. They were waiting for choppers here to bring them to their new homes. I remember that the concept of these resettlement camps was controversial at the time. But in the field, we had no time for politics. And we looked upon this as a way to protect the peasants who were caught up in the middle of the war. Okay, so I thought I'd try my hand at portraiture. This is a basically a self-portrait modeled on a photograph that I had taken of me. It was in um, Operation Foster in November of 1967. I was a radio operator with uh, 81 Waters with India Company 37 south of Da Nang. So this painting I did uh, based on a picture that I had found in a book on Vietnam. It reminded me so much of my own experiences over there that I based this painting on it. I added mountains like the ones like the, uh, th that were to the north and to the west of us. Uh, and that radio operator with the little 9-foot whip antenna there would be me. And yes, I know we were not supposed to walk on the rice paddy dikes, but I have to admit that we often did. I survived, fortunately. When our Photographers Club at the Veterans Center in Orange does a show, we call it Visions of Veterans, as you see in this poster. Before the COVID-19 crisis, we were traveling often to various locations in Southern Connecticut. We hope to restart the club in the near future. Meanwhile, these photos in the exhibit were taken by our club members, and I'll discuss a few of them. This first photo that we look at is by Ed, a Vietnam Army veteran who went on a road, road trip with his two sons a few years ago. Taken with a small, compact camera, it captures the essence of biking in the open desert, going where the road may lead you, living and riding in the moment. Great photo. Here we have what seems like a simple photo of the Milford City Hall taken on a cloudy day by Ron, an Army infantry veteran who served in Vietnam with the Americal Division 
uh, around Monkey Mountain near Da Nang. Ron took the photo of the rear of the city hall, which you don't usually see, but the gold domes and the white columns reflected in the duck pond on the Wipawag River lend an air of classic beauty to the stately building. In this photo, Dennis, an Army veteran of Vietnam, captured a moment in time during one of the photo club's excursions into the Racebrook Tract in Orange, which has some great hiking trails, by the way. The industriousness of the bees contrasts with the, the placid prettiness of the flowers whose nectar they are searching for, and they both stand out before the blurred backdrop of the leaves behind them. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a great photo. I hope you enjoyed this little preview of our art exhibit at the Milford Library, and that this will encourage you to visit it yourself. It is definitely worth the trip. The library is open to the public, and if you own a Connecticut library card and it's part of Bibliomation, then you can also take books out of the Milford Library, just so you know that. Also, there are numerous restaurants in the area, and uh, the Silver Sand State Park is only a few miles away. I hope you have enjoyed this little excursion into the complex matrix of the so-called real world. If you have, then please subscribe and hit that little notification bell to make sure you don't miss my future videos. Thank you, and live well until we meet again. Yes, I know, I'm mixing famous phrases. Thank you.